Welcome back to the Wombology tournament for our second semi-final. The last game of our top four. We already have one finalist, Ryzen from Complexity, getting the big upset over 6-0. Slotto is beaming with pride in his teammate right now. But uh, he's going to have a tough test ahead of him in the final, and it's going to be against one of these two men, Hoy and Life Coach. Obviously, by this point, when we're in the top four, we've talked about all these players at length. But, yeah. I mean, what, what, to sum up for people what they can expect from Hoy and Life Coach, from your perspective, Sotil. Um, Two pretty polarized styles, really. Um, this is going to be a, a battle of questions and answers, most commonly. Hoy favors the, the mid-range decks and the aggressive decks. He likes to be that guy with initiative. We do see that Reno lock in his lineup. Um, but other than that, he's playing fairly standard Hoy stuff, which is mid-rangey, aggressive, minion-heavy, board presence decks. Um, Life Coach, notoriously a little bit of a slower player, a little bit of a greedier player, likes to play the high value cards, the slower decks. Um, and we see that as a reflection with like the Dragon Warrior that he brought and the, the Reno Lock that he has as well. So this will be a series where Hoy is set out as the aggressor for the, for the majority of it. And Life Coach is trying to stabilize and find the answers. That's the style that these two guys have become famous for. It's the style that they both used to great success in the past. So no reason for them to detract from it now. Yep, just checking the lineups of these guys here. So from Hoy, we have the Druid, Hunter, Warlock, and Warrior with the uh, the Druid ban. So it's yep. going to be the Hunter, Warlock, and Warrior for him. And Hoy has banned the Warlock of Life Coach. So it's going to be the Warrior, Paladin, Druid, as I say, with the Warlock banned. Mm -hmm. So both going to be playing Warrior. And uh, yeah, so it's just going to be Warrior as the only one that's appearing in both lineups. Yeah, and even then it's markedly different decks because as I said, Life Coach is playing that Dragon Warrior, which uh, has been fairly unsuccessful for him so far, you'd say. We got the win with it against... Uh, yeah, he managed to beat a Freeze Mage back. with Warrior. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Such a big achievement. Yeah. Such a big achievement. Yeah. Well, I mean, this tournament has been absolutely stacked. So, you know, we're getting into the... Uh, the end of it here we have just three matches left to bring you of course we're going to bring you the final we're also going to bring you the final of our side event as well mm -hmm. uh not quite sure who's in the final of that yet we need to check up with our our colleagues who have been bringing that to you of course the yeah. some of some of the other uk caster mafia i can that. i can try and uh, dig for some inside sources here just give me a second well we can consult our friends in the uh the uk caster mafia who've been bringing you the side event uh, hosted by Falcone Punch, Aquablad, and Lorinda, and of course uh, Bacon Infinity as well, who's bringing the other stream of that. But we'll, we'll be bringing that final, and again, we'll, we'll, we'll try and get you some of the, the history of that side event and how they got there as well. We'll okay, I've got it. The, sorry, sorry to interrupt. The final of the side tournament is Green Sheep versus Death Lord. Oh, wow, that's definitely a, a, another great game. Green, Green Sheep, of course, DreamHack Valencia champion Death Lord, someone who's appeared in a number of major tournaments, including Gfinity Summer Masters. So we'll talk about those players when we get there. Uh, Green Sheep, of course, the, the, the schoolboy gamer, as all the, <laughs> as all the TV and media as, like to as call it. Immortalized by a recent BBC documentary, Green Sheep, Green Sheep, the flourishing, the flourishing schoolboy gamer, sacrificing his grades for the esports dream. That's the narrative that we were sold recently on the BBC show that he was featured in. What I enjoyed is that uh, documentary. He was in the school. He was in the the dinner hall talking to his friends about the next tournament he was missing school to go to. And it was oh, I'm going to to Leon to play in this French tournament, which uh, Frank, given the company's gone bust and he never got the prize money, probably should have bought it. <laughs> <laughs> so life coach oh. versus Hoy. Yes. You can see the lineups here, and Pidgey's back once again to to cheer Hoy on help him make those decisions life coach uh i suppose it's fair that hollywood has a, a little helper because of course life coach's brain is equivalent to one and a half humans don't know if you're aware i didn't actually know yeah. that is that is that a medically confirmed fact uh maybe okay who knows right. maybe it's one i just made up that's also i guess it's possible. fine though and you know hoy gets to have an animal on his shoulder because life coach does of course have an animal on his head so um, oh <laughs> i went for a compliment you just dug in there on life hey coach. who the hell am i to talk about hairstyles right like take anything that i say about <laughs> hairstyling with a pinch of salt right so yeah i mean i don't have enough hair to talk about hairstyles yeah. and you've made some very poor decisions for yeah. quite a long time that neither of us are qualified to have that conversation quite right too life coach a very successful and stylish man so he i'm sure he is not bothered by anything i have to say so 
over $100,000 won in prize money last year, life coach, and Hoy, of course, picked up a number of major wins, the Buy Game House Cup 2 and the Gfinity Summer Masters 2, one of the few people to pick up two offline titles. I think uh, he joins that club of people like Calento, Firebat, Orange, as a, a very elite club of people with multiple land titles to their name. Yeah, very much so. One of the most storied players, one of the most successful players in Hearthstone history. Hoy, definitely, you know, much younger player starting out a career in Hearthstone, only came to prominence you know, fairly recently with his Vi Game House Cup win, um, and has tried to consolidate that in the meantime with some fairly successful showings in other tournaments as well. But he's definitely starting to look, you know, uh, sorry, looking to start the the Hoy franchise at this point. Really get himself out there and get himself his name up there on the level with the life coaches, the Calentos, the Firebats, etc. Yeah, I mean, I know we both consider Hoy one of the very best players in the world, and he has those two land titles to his name. But That's honestly, so in the yeah. team with Sixo and Oskaka, he's in there with the world champion mm -hmm. and one of la towards the end of last year, one of the most successful tournament winners yes. in all of Hearthstone. So he doesn't need to, you know, he maybe does get forgotten about a little bit in that team. But uh, he's looking to make a statement here as Life Coach opens on the Druid and Hoy going for the aggressive Hunter. What do you think of this matchup for the Hunter? Uh, it's, a, it's a matchup we talked about fairly extensively before. I think it was uh, Zelay's game where, you know, I was, I was making the point that this is a fine matchup for the Druid, but it all comes down to recognizing that situation where you're uh, able to make the switch to being the aggressor. You can't let Hunter be the player that's asking the questions the entire game because you will eventually just lose to the attrition from the hero power. At some point, you just have to try and go one bigger than the Hunter, innovate a big minion out on board, just slam a big Druid to the claw or something, and then start going base to set up that threat of, threat of Savage Raw. But Life Coach does have a fairly decent hand to be able to fight back against this. Has the ramp alongside the Keeper of the Grove, which is... Uh, one of the best cards at making up for the lost tempo that you get from casting wild growth. Absolutely. Interestingly, we, we, we've, we've talked about Holly in the past and his ability as a mid-range player, that one of his greatest skills is the ability to take a mid-range deck that can control the board in the early game, but knowing when to flip the switch and go aggressive and, and take home for the win. And that's the kind of skill Life Coach is going to need to have here. Yeah, um, definitely been incredibly impressed by um, some of Hoy's decisions in tournaments that I've cast before. I definitely hog back to some games I saw in Gfinity where um, you know, he decided to, to make the switch and go aggressive in games you know, a turn or two earlier than I'd considered, and it turned out to be absolutely correct. And you know, my when I would have decided to, to go aggressive would have been too late, and Hoy had identified it perfectly. So he's definitely a very adept player at being able to do that kind of thing. Well, the Wild Growth presents itself pretty well for Life Coach here, having held off on a play in the last turn. Mm -hmm. So it does get him into the Keeper of the Grove. Uh, if the Mad Scientist is the only thing down on the board here, which we know it, it won't be, obviously, uh, more than likely, but do you favor the silence on the keep on the mad scientist or the, the damage from the keeper of the grove? It depends very heavily on the trap makeup that you expect from your opponent. I believe we've seen one freezing double snakes as Hoy's traps in the previous games. Um, so snakes in this situation wouldn't be too bad since you have the swipe in hand, so you probably wouldn't mind summoning that too much. But freezing trap against druid is an absolute nightmare. They really struggle to deal with it. So Hoy's definitely playing explosive. Is he? Oh, no, you're right. It's not freezing. It's one explosive and two snakes. You're yeah. absolutely right. You're absolutely right, yeah. Because so, it was the against Jab. Yeah, so side. actually, yeah. with that knowledge, which I'm sure Life Coach has, killing the Mad Scientist is probably better because explosive and snakes are two traps that you can deal with relatively well here. All right, we'll see if Life Coach agrees or if he goes for something different altogether. Yeah, you, I mean, you have the option of swiping this board to remove all the damage completely, but the problem with that is, is if Life Coach done his research, which I'm sure he has, he knows that there's a 66% chance of Snake Trap being summoned here. So if you suddenly swipe this board and then a Snake Trap is pulled off the, the Mad Scientist, you put yourself in a really rough position. So I think you should go ahead and Keeper of the Grove down the, the Mad Scientist here and then have that swipe to follow up later when you want to deal with the Snake Trap. What do you think about using the hero power to kill the 2-1 and then wrathing the scientist? Um, I mean, that's okay, but it gets back into that territory I discussed before where you're dedicating entire turns to removal and the hunter just puts you back in the same situation you were before. Whereas the Keeper of the Grove play, yes, you end up taking a bit more damage, but you get a more dominant minion in play. Yeah, you develop the 2-4. And Life Coach does agree. So he, as I say, develops that 2-4 body and gets the secret from the Mad Scientist. On Hoy's side, uh, don't know if we'll maybe mouse over it and let's see what it is. Who knows? 
Who knows? We'll find out at the same time Life Coach does. It's more exciting that way. We get to cast <laughs> honestly without the full information. Sure. Yeah. Um, how he starts to weave in these hero powers here, that's what he needs to do, really. As many turns as possible getting those hero powers in. And when he has a small hand and some low value minions, those are the perfect turns to start getting in those hero powers. Absolutely. So the swipe is potentially really good here if that does turn out to be a snake trap. Uh, poking into the Haunted Creeper and then swiping face is a pretty powerful play. Yeah. Um, but he could also just uh, decide to play the Druid of the Claw and skip the turn this turn and then use the swipe next turn when it's a bit more mana flexible with things like Wrath or he can weave in the hero power as well and gain the damage. I assume Life Coach, being uh, the thoughtful analytical player that he is, has been watching these games yeah. and knows that Hoi is playing Hunter's Mark. Yeah. And that's a, a really key bit of information, I think, because when you come to play things like Druid of the Claw defensively, how, no, how, knowing that your opponent has Hunter's Mark or having seen the Hunter's Mark before, mm -hmm. uh, knowing it's not in the hand somehow, oh, just that bit one. more of information. Because that's not a, a particularly common inclusion in Hunter, an aggressive Hunter these days. It's not, yeah, face Hunters don't tend, they tend to play Owl over Hunter's Mark because yeah, when you when you Hunter's Mark with the Wolf, for example, you still have to lose damage by trading into it. Whereas Owl, you just completely remove it, you send everything face. And it's particularly of note when you're up against Sludge Belcher. You Hunter's Mark a Sludge Belcher, it still threatens to trade for like a great deal of your board when your entire yeah. board is one he is one health minions as it often is in Face Hunter. So um, Owl is usually more preferred, but um, Hoi definitely fav uh, obviously favoring the, the Hunter's Mark overall in this situation. And Knife Juggler Unleash the Hounds, not a bad pickup here overall. Yep, so he can clear this through to the claw this turn also get some more knives with the, the spiders but would be playing into swipe somewhat leaning into it yeah i mean he saw the potential in the last turn for a swipe to be played so he might have a read that there is no swipe you know he he, he will expect life coach to, to expect snake trap, you know, the sort of second level read thing going on so he would have seen that there's there was an option for the um the Keeper of the Grove to go into the Haunted Creeper and the Swipe to be played. And it looks like he is going to protect himself from Swipe just a little bit here. Yeah, so from Life Coach here, he can do the play that you suggested before, which is poke into the Haunted Creeper. And uh, the secret's still up, right? It is, yeah. I'm, I'm, like, I'm okay with that play, but I think that play starts with wrapping the Knife Juggler because it reduces so much damage potential from the, the knives. Sure, yeah. <laughs> okay. If you if you attack into that. the Haunted Creeper, even though at the end of it you do just get to swipe the Knife Juggler, there, are five, the two, three, there yeah. are five knives being thrown before that happens. Yeah. yeah that is a get... ton of potential damage. Yeah, a ton of potential damage and a good chance you lose the 2-3 as well. Yeah, you're absolutely I right. Think if, I think if you lost the 2-3, you'd be happy. I think if all five knives yeah. just went face, that would be the most miserable thing overall. Basically just automatically negates that Ancient of Law healing that you have next turn. <laughs> yeah. Alright, well this is what we're going to see. And is it Snake? It is well read by Life Coach. Mm -hmm. Uh, he did attack face on the previous turn and no secret activated, so he pretty much had perfect knowledge that it was right. snakes at that point, but now gets to swipe the face. He's equalizing the race a little bit, and he now has that Ancient of Law to heal himself, which does put him in a pretty decent position in the race overall. Yeah, I mean, this is okay. If he can heal with the Ancient of Law, stabilize a little bit. It's a little bit unfortunate he has to heal rather than draw, but he puts himself a couple of turns to develop combo and develop a board. Or develop a board. They're both options. And the right. owl is not a great pickup for life coach. It's not, no. Wait, the owl's not a good pickup for life for Hoy, right? For Hoy, sorry, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. So it's not. And we seen so it looks like he's playing one owl, one hunter's mark in his deck, just playing both, which is not a deck building philosophy that I usually get on board with, because you know, um, Normally one or the other is better, and it's better just to have two copies of that one card in it so that you draw it consistently. You know, having one of each feels like you kind of hedge your bets against more options, but you're just as likely to draw the wrong option for the situation you're looking for than the right option against the situation you're looking for. So generally, the one of each kind of strategy is just a, a little bit of a sign of, of not having worked out which one you like at that point, but there is also the possibility that he's just playing an additional Hunter's Mark on top of two owls as well. Well, maybe we'll get to see the lists afterwards, or maybe we'll get to see a, a second owl at some point in this mm. series. Who knows? But yeah, Life Coach. Hmm. I guess he's considering 
what his opponent's outs are and whether or not there's merit in developing i guess shredder and shade here yeah, he might. I mean, he might be looking at maybe wrathing the Lepernome, oh, and normal. then so the the two damage gets to go face, and then developing yeah. a minion alongside that. It's unlikely that you die from ten um, against two cards from a hunter. It will involve some sort of quick shot shenanigans. Um, he's going to choose to develop the shade here so that he can gain the one life as well. No, he's going to develop the aspirant alongside it. Okay. Doesn't play around explosive shot with his positioning, Callum. How do you feel about that? I feel ambivalent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's that's a good response. The inner arena player in me is coming out in situations like this. Like, oh, you didn't put your stealth minion in the middle. Come on. Knife juggler is again not a good pickup for Hoy. I can't say we've seen him have too much success with this hunter. Uh, yeah, I'm not actually sure what the overall win rate is in terms of the games we've seen, but it, it feels, I, I agree with you, it feels like it's struggled, but sometimes a deck can feel like it's struggling and still have a decent win rate. It's just one of those weird quirks, but it definitely feels like it's a deck that he has been struggling with a little bit. So, yeah, there's, I mean, there's still... Do you play the knife juggler this turn just out of consideration that quick shot has to be an option next so you if you play the knife juggler this turn yeah and then you draw quick shot you can play i will quick shot get kill command win uh no you can't that would be seven mana allocated and you'd only have dealt eight uh six damage and you don't have enough to press the hero power as well no so if you if you play the owl before you so you play the owl then you quick shot then you've got a beast on board so you can kill command with the owl. Right, but he's going to gain one armor this turn, right? Yeah, so, okay, yeah. I'm yeah. just saying... In, in, I mean, in, I, I totally agree board, with yeah. the analysis of clearing your hand for quick shot. That's correct. It's just that specific example doesn't... I'm just trying to... Because that's the, the most reach you can have, right? Yeah. So it's, um, whether, it's whether or not that reach is worth it. Quick shot into... So if you play, yeah, play the owl and then you can play quick shot into quick shot and still have another two mana left. Uh, yeah, that's not any better. Yeah, so quick shot kill command is as good as it gets. Yeah. I think this is probably over. It is. Life Coach hasn't drawn any combo pieces, though, which could have finished out this game. Right. So he can do 11 this turn, be two damage off. Is he thinking about intervening out with the Shredder, perhaps, just to develop this board even further? So he'd have 11 next turn, and then 12 with the hero power after he attacks face this turn his opponent will be at 12 um honestly i think either play here is perfectly safe you're you're not going to die from 13 against you know reasonable hunter situations um and you know playing the additional minion does prevent hoy from having outs where he just clears a minion and presses hero power and he's a turn closer to killing you so innovating the shredder or hero power both lead to winning the game there 99.9% .9 of the time one of them was probably 0.001% better but I cannot be bothered to work out which one. We can't win the game this turn now. Right. We could have, if you played this ready, we would have won the game this turn. Correct. Oh, there you go. There's the force of nature. That'll do. More than enough damage against that first combo piece. Um, but for example, so he was at 13 health, he had three minions on board. So say the card in hand is Unleash the Hounds and Quick Shot is top decked. That would be six damage plus the kill command, which is 11, so that still wouldn't be enough. But if he'd have played the extra minion, he then would have had 12, and he would have been at one less health because he would have played an extra minion instead of armoring up. So you can see like how close this kind of situation yeah. is about, do I secure the lethal? Do I gain the one extra life to play around the ridiculous outs? All right, well, Life Coach gets the win with the Druid and Hoy loses with the Hunter. Hoy's gonna go to his warrior. Yes, he is. And I believe this is Patron Warrior from Hoy. We've, we've called Patron a couple of times and been wrong. And uh, when it's uh, been, uh, it's been Control Warrior once and it's been the Dragon Warrior from Life Coach once. But neck on the line again, I think this is Patron Warrior from Hoy. Yeah. Hopefully we're correct. Yeah, I th I, I'm pretty sure you're right. Yeah. So yeah, the Patron lining up against the Druid. How do you feel about this matchup, Sosal? Um, I'm a big fan of it from the patron side, um, but I am a, also a very avid patron player, so it's a matchup where my personal statistics are biased by the fact that I have a ton of experience with Patron Warrior, but my personal statistics say that this matchup is close to 60% favoured. Um, I think in realistic terms, it's a little bit less than that, um, somewhere in the range of 55. 
um, but definitely a matchup that the Patron Warrior does very, very well in because the, the early tempo minions can occasionally get the job done. Things like 1-3s into Inner Rage, 1-3s into Cruel Taskmaster, Unstable Ghoul, Hide an Acolyte behind it. All these kind of things are annoying for Druids to deal with early. And then on top of that, we have the thing that is done to death. You guys all know it because casters talk about it every single game it happens, which is Druid cannot deal with patrons. So. Well, Life Coach has just stepped away to uh, you know, clear his head or prepare himself somehow. So we're just waiting for these players to get ready and get into this game. And uh, it's just going to be a few seconds here, I think. So as I say, the Hoy, the Hoy Warrior versus the Life Coach Druid. That's not the way I meant to say that sentence, but I'm just going to go with it. It, it did the job. It got the job done, Khan, and it's fine. It's been a long day so far. Yeah, so we do see Frothing Berserker and Dr. Boom. There is a big game hunter, though. Um, yeah, I think we saw the big game hunter before, and yeah, this, yeah, the, I mean, the frothing indicates patron. I think we saw the big game hunter mm -hmm. and pointed that out at the time. Well, there's the combo for life coach. <laughs> he wants to keep it. Yeah, I not what he wants so. in this scenario. The shade is a great keep, in my opinion. Again, it's a, a very similar thing. The earlier you get the shade down and growing, the the better of a utility it, uh, it has. And Shadow Axe Ramus does a lot of things in this matchup. If you get it down early. It can grow to the size to take out a frothing berserker that's played um if you don't have an answer to it it can remain on the board so that when the patrons are generated you have that shade in play to take out one of the problem three health patrons and it makes your potential removal options more possible then of course if you keep it there for long enough it can just be the the savage rule where game ending damage at the end so early shade definitely a really big deal in this matchup for druid yeah as you say he keeps the shade and gets the aspirin life coach uh is, yeah, is playing the Aspirants. We saw him draw one in the last game. Yeah. A lot of players we haven't seen the Aspirin from. It's, I was, until we see the lists fully, maybe after the tournament, we won't know exactly who was playing Aspirin and who wasn't. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't I, know if Life I Coach... I believe Life Coach there. is the only Druid we've seen it drawn from, though. And we've seen a lot of Druids, so... Unless there are many Aspirants hidden in other people's decks. Um, we've seen some Aspirants dropped off Shredders, but we haven't seen too many actually come out of people's decks, if I'm remembering correctly. I think we might have seen at least one, but yeah, I'd, I'd have to go back and check. I'd say Maybe, maybe on day one, though, I've forgotten about this. Yeah, we've, we've seen so many games and so many Druid games at this point, it's hard to know who was playing what. Other than I, I remember Sixo was playing double mind control tech. Um, but maybe coin, coining the Aspirant here lets you curve out directly into Shade of Max Ramos, but it does play out on curve into Fiery War Axe. The alternative is to pass this turn, then you can immediately just coin the Shade of Max Ramos. So you still get the Shade down on the same turn, and the benefit is that you're playing around Fiery War Axe while doing it. And by doing this, if he has the Fiery War Axe, you do sacrifice your Shade growing by a turn, you get it down a turn later. But the, the potential benefit, if there isn't a Fiery War Axe, but, uh, Life Coach obviously deems is high enough to play this card out. Yeah, he isn't going to get punished by the Fiery War Axe this time. But, I mean, as we were discussing earlier, the prospect of the Fiery War Axe being mulliganed for by the Warrior is a lot of the reason why some people are cutting the Nessus Aspirin. Yes. Um, and in, in, a, in a tournament situation, you kind of... If you are playing Aspirants in your deck as the surprise factor, because you feel like that kind of meta has gone away and people aren't mulliganing to beat Aspirant anymore, in a tournament format like this, you kind of only get that surprise factor for one round, and then you're in the situation where people have scouted out your decks and know what's up. So um, Aspirant, definitely a, a much debated pick in Druid at this point, let's put it that way. Yeah, absolutely. So he's going to be able to get the benefit here and play the Shade on turn three and leads this curve pretty nicely, so long as he can keep this alive. Uh, if he keeps it alive next turn, he's fine into the four, and then, yeah, it does get a little bit awkward the minute this a this aspirin dies. It does, yeah, that's that's the problem, and Hoy does have the slam in his hand. This is um, one of the great strengths of Patron Warrior when compared to Control Warrior, where if it does miss its Fiery War Axe early, it has so many better tools to be able to fight for the board through combinations of cards. Um, things like Unstable Ghoul or Armorsmith in combination with Slam, Cruel Taskmaster, Inner Rage, etc. can make favourable trades on the board to buy you some time if you miss that War Axe. That's the situation we see here. No War Axe to deal with the Aspirant, but he does have the slow play to deal with it with the Slam and the, the Unstable Ghoul over a couple of turns. Life Coach, I guess is he considering the Wild Growth here to make the, 
the mana gain permanent rather than the shade. Mm. Definitely a consideration, because that does smooth out his curve. Life Coach will know that there will be a lot of options for Hoy to be able to clear his board here, but looks like he's going to risk it. Or not clear his board, but clear the Aspirin at least. Oh, hey. Sorry, I was, I was just enjoying the uh, the complete rope yeah. of Life Coach there on turn, yeah. turn two. Maximum rope. 100% burned out there. So the War X is picked up, which means that... The slam and then stable ghoul is not is not necessary now, so you can use the fiery works and keep the ghoul alive. Yeah, I like that because you get to then um, curve out an acolyte of pain behind it on the following turn if you want to. Um, your mana is just being used a little bit inefficiently right now, which is annoying. But um, for patron, it's it's not a big deal as it is for say you know druid or secret paladin that relies so heavily on their curve. Patron doesn't need to curve out consistently every yeah. turn. They can use combinations of cards. Is there an argument for the Slam Whirlwind here to clear the shade as well? Uh, oh wow. Uh, I actually like that. I like had, that had, I, had I seen a line that you had not? Uh, the Slam isn't necessary. Yeah, okay, so you're doing the Slam. That. Yeah, yeah, well, use the Whirlwind. Yeah, I hadn't considered that actually. The Fiery War Axe top deck just distracted me, but the Whirlwind into the Ghoul to clear out the shade is uh, definitely a very strong play there. Well done, Kevin. Have a start. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, nice. I, it's, I'm going to claim it's all from casting with you for, what, 15 hours now in the past 20, in the first past sort of 36. Right. You did so, also receive extensive patron training from me at one point, which... I did. I no, in, I, old, in old patron. It was fair. in old Warsong patron. Yeah. We do need to, uh, I think, perhaps do a refresher on the new patron at some point. That's my bad. I, I, I was too busy spewing words out of my mouth to actually spot the good play there, I think, Callum. But yeah, dealing with that shade, which I spent so much time at the start of the game... Evangelizing. Expl yeah, explaining was such an important thing for the druid to have. But yeah, dealing with it there, dealing with it there was definitely the right play. All right, but Life Coach does have a couple of five drops here. The Azure Drake and the Druid of the Claw into the War Axe. So either of these can be dealt with. But you would you would be asking Hoy to make a pretty inefficient acolyte play. Yeah. So I mean there is an execute as well, so that could get used. But it would be a, a pretty good use of a, a pretty good suck of resources from the the patron warrior deck, whichever one you decide to use. So he's going to go for the Drake here. Can now innovate the Wrath if he would like to to deny any potential card draw from this acolyte. The patron is already quite low on cards. Um, so limiting the potential of a, of a battle rage turn here to bring them back into it is definitely considerable, but Life Coach turns it down. Second Acolyte picked up, so he can choose here to either slam the Azure Drake and keep his Acolyte in play, or he can slam his own Acolyte of Pain to immediately pick up the two cards. Which do you think is better? Go for the two cards? I, yeah. I, the, the value of that one free in play is not huge against Druid. It is an execute proc, which is pretty useful. Um, but yeah, immediately drawing the three cards here, as you end up doing after trading it in, is pretty valuable. And picking up that Drake Corsair is pretty nice for the following turn. I think you will probably just go ahead and develop another Acolyte this turn, so you have another nice Execute proc on the board. But that Drake Corsair is nice for the following turn when the Death Spike comes down. Yeah, definitely. The Dread Corsair is so flexible in these decks and so effective at protecting things like Acolyte of Pain. And obviously frothing berserker as well but in this early game it does just allow you to maximize your draws and really eke out every part of your deck yeah but life coach disagrees gonna go for the ghoul and uh, hoy. Oh, sorry hoy yes yes he's gonna go for the unstable ghoul here so that's an execute proc in his own right he can then play the acolyte out on the following turn if he wants to and immediately get more draws from it that way um, so the, the Unstable Ghoul gives him a little bit more flexibility. It's likely if he played the Acolyte of Pain, he would have had to poke it into whatever was played and execute it, unless he wanted to use the Death Spike charge on it as well. Um, so, you know, I can understand the Ghoul being played here for sure. All right, so from Life Coach, he has the Innervate. can go up to eight mana, so what can he do with that? He has Wrath and Pilot Shredder as an option. You can use the Innervate to flow a mana and play the Druid of Claw or just add any hero power, but I don't think there's a real incentive to do that here. So I I, I kinda like Wrath Pilot Shredder. 
Wrath pilot shredder seems legit, yeah. The the fear of this unstable ghoul will be real because you're you're looking back over at your warrior opponent and knowing that they have enough mana now to potentially drop a Grim Patron alongside this if you don't deal with it. So it is a high threat minion, and this again might be a, a mind games play from Hoy as to why he played this instead of the uh, the Acolyte of Pain. It might just be representing the threat of patrons to his opponent, but Life Coach does not fight here. Yeah, I don't know about that. Oh, and if there was a patron, this would, would be huge. pretty much be game with that inner rage draw, but no such luck right now. It does have the death spike to be able to take out this uh, pilot shredder quite effectively if he'd like to. Um, does have many flexible plays here. Um, can also choose to play the acolyte inner rage, what? the no. the unstable ghoul into the um, into the pilot shredder. Do it that way, just immediately get the card draw. But the death spike definitely seems like the most solid option. Light well. Sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what, do we, what do we do with this? Nothing? Uh, just ignore it for now. Uh, well, he was supposed to put one damage on it because by hitting face, he's now guaranteed that the light well heals face. Whereas by breaking up the damage, putting one point on the light well, then the light well. 50 50 chance. Yeah, the light well could heal itself. So essentially, you've always lost damage this way by attacking face. Yeah. That was an error from Holly. He's now is he considering the inner rage now? No, he's just thinking about the 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 dread corsair or not. I'm gonna play it. Um, it. It seems weird. Some people in chat might be questioning, you know, why zero mana? Why wouldn't you play it? The thing is, it's because it's zero mana. You can choose to play it whenever you want. So, for example, if battle rage or patrons were drawn on the follow on the following turn. He has that zero mana card in his hand that he can immediately use to activate Battle Rage and can immediately just drop on the board to protect his Grim Patrons from removal. Well, we could see something like a full removal turn from Life Coach here, or something like a Wrath, even charging Druid of the Claw into the 1-3. Mm. Would have put him in a little bit of a vulnerable position on that, but just trying to see some way he can develop a minion and clear the board. Yeah, the problem is he has a hand stack full of removal right now, and if he uses a bunch of this removal now, uh, when the eventual, eventual sorry, the eventual, I get that word out, patrons do come down, he's going to have used a lot of his premium removal and won't be able to fight back, which we've already discussed is very difficult for Druid. So he might be considering, you know, that might have been his consideration as to why he chose to keep the Wrath earlier, because he wanted to have that Wrath for a potential 3-3 patron. And right. he is going to decide, he's going to decide to cycle it right now, deciding that he needs cards. going to swipe the Unstable Ghoul, which does end up being a board clear. And unfortunately for him, puts a point of damage onto that Light Well. <laughs> so if there is damage to face taken anytime soon, if, or this turn at least, it does mean that that Light Well is going to have the 50-50 of just healing itself. This is a tough one for for Hoi here. Yeah, it really is. His uh, no. not drawn into his his mid range stuff. You know the the frothing berserkers, the shredders, and the patrons. Nor has he really got a huge ton, a huge pile of cycle together that can really dig through his deck. So he's uh, struggling a little bit to seize the initiative in this matchup. And Druid, who has not had a particularly good draw themselves from from Life Coach is just finding all the time in the world here because of the, the lack of initiative being seized by Hoy. Yeah, do you think there was potential for the inner rage on the Acolyte there and then hit the light well, get a couple of draws, and if you can get on the first draw something like a Patron or a Frothing? I think may, I think either the inner rage or the death spike could have arguably been used that turn, but I think you have to keep one or the other in case things like Battle Rage, things like Green Patron come yeah. out of the deck soon. I think you play the inner rage and then you see what you get and if there's something off the top like a, a patron or a frothing yeah i think that's definitely viable but hoy is uh all in on this and um, on the the combo draws here he is he's exhausted a decent portion of his deck he did cycle a few cards with acolyte early so he knows there's a, a fair density of strong combo cards left in his deck here speaking of combo draws Life Coach did pick up the Force of Nature this turn and has the, the single combo and three of the four cards of the double combo. Mm. So Ancient of Lore to draw here would potentially, and with that Light Well on board, which isn't going to die anytime soon, I don't think. I think Life Coach recognizes that now is the time to put some stuff on the board. Denying that draw, and the Battle Rage picked up on the top. Battle Rage does come out, so there would have been a huge turn if that Acolyte was left up. 
the Death Spy Swing would have come out, the Battle Rage would have been the next card drawn, which would have then just quickly spiraled the game as two more cards are drawn. We could have seen a Patron come into the hand then, this Doctor Boom would have been in hand, but since the Acolyte was cleared, that Battle Rage is a lot less effective, and we'd probably end up just seeing Doctor Boom come down right here. Goes ahead and executes the 4 3, which I believe keeps him alive in case of combo, because combo there would have been 14, 18, plus 4, 22? Yeah, see, yeah, he would know. He doesn't actually play around combo. He had enough life to survive anyway, because the, the light well is a zero attack. Yeah, that's right, right? 14 plus the 4 plus the extra 4. Yeah, 22. Yeah, that was right. Mm -hmm. hmm. So, if the light well stays on board, how much is double combo? Uh, 26. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> That's a lot of damage. Yeah. This is the thing with uh, some of the shredder drops that Druid can get. You know, you're, you're thinking of, you know, Nerubian eggs, light wells, these zero power things. Mistress of pain. Mistress of pain, yeah. The, the, the low threat things that often get ignored in a lot of situations. Against Druid, you have to respect them, which is just the power of the card Savage Roar. You have to give Druid so much respect at the time for having minions in play. Yeah, just any minion that can attack. So anything that isn't Ancient Watcher yeah. is really good value up for Druid, potentially up for Shredder. Pretty much. Dread Corsair does make the Battle Rage live here, but having just seen the Big Game Hunter, is there potential for just the, the Tempo Grom to face this turn? There's also the, the Light Well being on board is, diff is makes the, the Boom Bots difficult as well. It does, yeah. Now, one damage to the Drake. Not what Hoy would have been looking for there. Uh, how is he going to play this turn? So he's gonna, he's gonna go and throw the second boom bot into oh. the big game hunter that would have died to the death bite there anyway. So it looks like he's gonna hold on to this death bite charge yet again. He's just gonna use the Grom to trade for the board here. Keeps the Dread Corsair in hand this time for exactly the reason that I discussed previously, which is he wants it as a guaranteed draw from that battle rage. Yeah. Yeah, valuing that Dread Corsair very highly, not even thinking that he might want to protect the the Grom with, or have another minion on the board to potentially mitigate combo. So yeah, again, a Savage Roar draw there would have been lethal. Yep. So all Life Coach has here are the two Ancient of Lores. He's staring down this Gromash. He can clear it with using combo pieces, but... Mm -hmm. It's difficult because there's, there's part of me that thinks if you draw here, you can draw into a guaranteed lethal next turn. And there's, is there any way for him to kill you in two turns? Well, that changes things. Uh, yeah, Innovate Swipe Living Roots looks pretty solid here. Again, it's a ton of your removal pieces being used that aren't being used on patrons, but I think you're in the combo business right now. You just yeah, I was going to say, with combo in hand and yeah. minions on the board, I yeah. think you feel secure enough that this game is going to end in a couple of turns. Yeah, absolutely. You are in the kill your opponent business right now, so you're not too worried about the patrons coming out. You feel like you'll be able to kill them over the top if that happens, so... Definitely just using all his combo pieces to deal with the threat that's in front of him. Still no patrons being drawn for Hoy. And looks like this is going to have to be the Battle Rage turn. He's held on to that Death Bite for as long as he possibly could. Yeah, so if the Corsair comes down here and the Death Bite goes into the 5-5, five five, he'll go down and to 18, can armor back up to 20. Don't think he'll be dead because you'd have to get through the Corsair. I mean, yeah, he's, he's comfortable with the Hell Turtle anyway. There's the Patron, just one card too late, but the Patron now alongside the Armorsmith can potentially provide some bounce back for the health here. Uh, still another natural Whirlwind left in the deck, and still another Death Bite as well, I believe. So he has potential to generate those Patrons, and the Armorsmith is going to give him a little bit of stability here, but the Druid isn't all in on combo with that hand. There is another Ancient of Lore that can keep him going for a few turns. Alright, is he going to play the Grim Patron? No, he's just going to armor up here. He's not going on the Patrons yet, he's going to wait until he can develop a, a really big board of the Patrons. Yeah, like I said, having now cycled a bit more of his deck with that with that second Acolyte and with the Battle Rage, there's a Whirlwind and another Death Spite sat in his deck right now, so I feel like he wants to make a more resilient board of Patrons that can't just be, say, combo cleared by his opponent, which is often something that the matchup comes down to. 
um, where the patron has just exhausted all their resources in making that big final board of patrons and the druid just uses combo to clear it out and then the patron just doesn't have the resources in deck anymore to win. And so he's going to wait until he he builds a, a more significant board with the Grim Patron. And like I said, his deck is uh, pretty well stacked with, with cards that are able to help him do that. This Armor Smith makes things a little bit tricky for Life Coach as well. Uh, obviously, the Dread Course here is what's keeping Holly in the game right now. We, you know, it wouldn't quite be enough with the, the Light Well. No. Shade's a good pickup here. Shade is a fantastic pickup. It's, it normally feels a little bit awkward in the late game to just pick up a shade and have to play it as a 2-2, but what Life Coach really needs here are bodies on the board to be able to play combo. Yeah. Um, I actually think, I think shade in the late game is actually a really fantastic draw in a lot of situations. It, it helps you win games that are borderline unwinnable sometimes when you've exhausted all the minions in your hand and you're just kind of sat with combo, but your opponent manages to stabilize at like 17 HP, 16 HP. So you're sat there just staring a hand, a hand that has, you know, like a combo and an innovate in it. And you're like, oh, how do I ever win this game now? Like, I'm not going to be able to push this damage through. And suddenly Shade of Naxxramas comes off the top and solves all your problems for you. What can Holly do here? Uh, the second Execute is probably being used this turn to take care of the 5-5. Five -five. Um, he hasn't seen Dr. Boom yet, I don't think. We saw Boom play, but that was from Hoy. Yeah. Um, so he does have to be wary. I guess that is why he's holding on to the second execute to deal with the threat of Doctor Boom. And now Sludge Belcher and Hero Power is a very solid defensive play. Tucking away an armor smith behind a Sludge Belcher always feels good because you know there's a good chance that it gets to net a decent amount of armor. Yeah, you're guaranteed two armor getting through the Sludge Belcher. There is the Boom though. Mm. There's also Keeper of the Grove. There's, I mean, is there an argument for double Keeper here? Uh, silencing both minions, you mean? Or... Yeah, silence, silence the Belcher and silence the armor smith to stop the armor gain and then set yourself up for combo next turn. Uh, it's valid, so you get a, a board of four minions. Um, let's follow your line here, Callum. Are you going to attack with that shade at the same time, or are you going to leave it in stealth? I'm not sure. That's... Okay. that's I, I... <laughs> I'm just thinking what, what, what minions you'd be left with. So you, you have the 3-3 three, three, and then the Firework, if you attack face, the Fireworks takes out the 3-3, three, three, but you've then got 6 damage off it. Mm -hmm. So you've effectively done a Fireball. Mm -hmm. So I think you want to reveal the Shade. And then the the two minions that you've silenced can kill one Keeper. Yeah. So you end up with your opponent on 12 going up to 15 with the Light Ball, so you'd have enough for combo. Yep, I, think it's a, I think it's a play. I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all. I think um, the Double Silence play, I think it's marginally better just to keep the Shade in stealth. Because um, like you said, the Fiery War Axe will attack something anyway, so that 3 damage you gave the Shade credit for doesn't really exist. Because the Fiery War Axe would just hit a 2, a two attack minion, for example, so... Um, well, you say and, that, but would, would it? Would, you, I suppose you'd use the Inner Rage. Yeah, potentially you'd use the Inner Rage or Fiery War Axe plus the Armor Smith to take out one of the 2-4s can potentially happen. So keeping the Shade in stealth gives you more of a guaranteed target to activate the combo with next turn. That only works if you use the Inner Rage or the Execute, because in... The situation where you're revealing the shade and it's, it's dying to the war axe, yeah. the 1 4 and the 3 5 go into a 2 4. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, anyway. Boombot takes out the Belcher. He does indeed. Has gained a decent amount of armor here with the Boombot hits. If a Whirlwind is drawn here with that armor smith, is that good enough? No, he wouldn't have the mana to execute afterwards. Does have the, the, the mana here and the resource now with that second inner rage to deal with that Dr. Boom if he wants to. Is that enough? Uh, so he will in a rage, he will execute, he will probably armor up. Now he's going to go ahead and play the armor smith here. So there is the face will go into the slime, and then there is 12 damage uh, plus the 6, 18 damage plus the light well. Yep, I believe this is. No, because the. Yeah, I think it's 20. He gains one health. No, he gains two health now from the. Slime being here, so I think he's one off. Yeah, so he goes, he goes Attacking up to the slime with his face, he goes up to 21, and then he has 12 plus 6 plus 2, so he has 20. Yeah, he's one damage off lethal right now. I, yeah, so yeah, because he's attacked with his face, so he has 12, not the full 14. Yeah. Oh, this is so frustrating for Hoy here. Mm -hmm. Uh, for Life Coach. 
sorry, yeah, for life coach. I get so confused with the perspective. The flipping, yeah. Um, so if you're what? looking here, the Thorison that came into hand. The Thorison enables Force of Nature double savage. It does, but that means you're not doing anything to address the double armor smith board, which means a ton of armor can be built from yeah. the opponent. And you could silence one of the armor smiths as well. Mm -hmm. He's just going to go in with the damage here. I mean, I, with the double keeper go in hand, he can do four damage to things. Oh, is that going to trade? Okay. Yeah, but again, you'll be leaving. No, you actually wouldn't be leaving the board behind of anything you can trade into. But you would lose, for example, the world from your opponent. We uh, are doing that from Life Coach. He didn't kill the two Armorsmiths first. Did he not? Is there a reason for No. I think he killed Armorsmith, two patrons, and then second Armorsmith? Interesting. Maybe he was roping and he just decided it was more important to get the, the patrons dealt with, so if he was going to miss an attack at the end of his turn, he would rather it was the last Armorsmith and he left patrons up. Yeah. And that's probably the only possibility I can think of, but... Yeah, going face there and leaving the armor smiths alive. Um, you just leave that shade revealed, and you know, your, 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 your opponent in Hoy would just immediately gain so much armor back with the double armor smith in play. But now Hoy is starting to draw into all these powerful cards that he would have wished he'd had five, uh, four or five turns ago. Again, he gets the chance to generate two patrons on the board, but we see double keeper in the hand from Life Coach that's able to uh, silence one and uh, shoot the other one down. So. Yeah, so that's the patrons going to be dealt with, and of course, no cards in hand. Yeah. Pretty dire. Both battle rage is gone, both acolytes gone, so no card draw. And that light well has been around for so long, just keeps refreshing itself. Anytime, I don't think the druid has ever been injured after the initial attack where Hoy made the mistake of hitting face. But since then, that life, that light well has just stuck around for the entire game, just constantly healing itself after all the whirlwind effects and things that have been going on. Yeah, he's the, the, the Light Well has done a lot of work, if only just to be a body on the board and be a threat and uh, have to be considered by all of the opponents, oh, all of the, the damage coming in. There we go. Interesting, he's going to go with the Savage Roar here to clear instead, but Hoy decides that any board clear there is good enough, so he's going to give up the game. Life Coach out goes out to a 2-0 lead here, and Hoy now has a mountain to climb. What is his last deck now to queue into the Druid? It's the Warlock. It's the Warlock. Feels bad. Yeah, Life Coach could just do Druid things here. That was a very tense game. It was. Um, similar to a game that um, I played as the Druid against uh, Ecop, um, where I as the druid basically just starved him out of things to do, was using the combo to clear, etc. It was a, a much closer game. It came down to some clutch top decks on my part when I was down to like two health, pulling Druid of the Claw followed by Ancient of Law off the top of my deck with no cards in hand. Um, so yeah, but that that is a route that Druid can take where they just exhaust all the win conditions from the patron deck. You know, they, they BGH down the Doctor Boom, they get rid of the Grom, they use their combo to get rid of a wave of patrons. Uh, find some way of dealing with the second wave of patrons like we saw there with the second savage roar from life coach and then suddenly like how how does patron win from that position they're just out of resources yeah i mean and we saw something like that in the druid mirror that we cast yesterday yeah. where each were just kind of trying to starve each other out and use their board their combos to clear and, and just control the board and win the game over the the longer term well here we go it's gonna be the reno lock versus the druids yeah, I so brought Zoo right about now. Exactly. Hoy has uh, deviated from his pure mid-range strategy a little bit and brought the uh, probably the most popular control deck in the meta right now in the form of Reno Lock. And the way this is lined up, the Zoo would have been a fantastic choice for him to try and take down this Druid um, in the previous game, even let alone this one. But he is going to have to make things work with the Reno Lock. And we've seen him in the previous match. He did actually manage to win this matchup. From an unfavorable position um so that's that's the thing with unfavored matchups it doesn't mean you're gonna lose just means you've got a little bit harder work on your hands than you would have liked in the spirit of uh, me asking you dumb questions sure also, yes why is it that warlock has emerged as the overwhelmingly favored reno jackson deck uh it's the combination of being able to gain an advantage by lowering your health so you like it's, it's all to do with life tap basically you life tap and you're sacrificing health in order to gain this advantage of drawing cards. So Reno obviously helps to make up for that. And then combine that with the fact that Life Tap is drawing cards, you just hit Reno far more consistently than you do with any other deck. On top of that, the nature of Reno decks 
means that your your deck is inconsistent. You're only playing single copies. So you need a good amount of card draw to make sure that you have key answers when you need them. So again, Life Tap gets that done. I think also the the amount of different removal in Warlock as well. Yeah. The ability helps. to play Shadow Flame, Hellfire, Siphon Soul, Demon Wrath. Yeah. I don't know if, I mean, apart from uh, Mage, I don't know if there's any other class with that much AoE damage. Right. You want to put um, a Reno in a Druid, for example, and suddenly to get enough removal, you're playing things like Claw and Starfire. And, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't work out all that well. Yeah. There you go. See, I asked the dumb question so you can give the interesting answers. Yeah. Sure. Uh, anyway. Speaking of interesting, wild growth on turn two has happened. <laughs> yeah, we just we don't even need to mention it. We can just talk. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's just happened, and Thorison is an option for next turn. Yeah, we're about to see Emperor Thorison curved into Ancient of Law here in in on uh, I believe turn four and turn five respectively. So we've actually seen two wild growths, I believe. And Holly choosing to coin out the Shredder wants to be able to have some chance of contesting this potential Emperor that comes down on turn 6. So with that Mortal Coil in hand, preloading the Shredder means that he gets the opportunity to trade in. Uh, I mean, the Thoris is a pretty easy decision here, right? It would seem that way, but from Life Coach's perspective, it doesn't seem like anything is an easy decision. He's always going to consider his options, but in terms of Life Coach turns, that was about as short as they get. Only about 10 seconds of consideration there, and then he jammed his Emperor down. That's life, coach. Yeah. That's the mortal card to fill this up as well, so it's going to be able to clear this Thorson pretty well. A two mana Savage Roar and a three mana Swipe, as well as, of course, the, the cheap Ancient Lore and the big game Hunter as well. So those three removal options being reduced are uh, a, a really good position for, for life coach to be in. Yep. And having now the Ancient of Lore and the Azure Drake in his hand is definitely a winning combination. But probably just going to see Ancient of Lore come down. He has Drake Swipe for the following turn if he needs a removal option to follow this up. But just going to try and pick up some options. Get that, gets that Aspirant, which is already kind of in the position where it's a little bit useless. Uh, even if he plays it next turn, it's not like it ramps him into combo any quicker because he would be going to 9 mana the turn after anyway, and his combo is already discounted. So you can see how quickly Aspirant just doesn't have an effect on the game anymore. Yeah, I mean, the, the effect on that Savage Roar is huge as well, because it does mean that the double combo can be achieved uh, if the second Savage Roar is picked up on 10 mana. Uh, no. No, sorry, yes, you need to discount the <laughs> Force of Nature as well. Yeah, yeah. It's like... My mistake. Callum. Yeah, you need, to, you need to two out of the three parts to get the, the discount to do it in 10 mana. Correct, yeah. For three cards rather than four. Yeah. Well, technically three card, four cards because you need Thorson, so... Sure. Um, this spell damage here is looking tempting, but it doesn't really help him get anything done. So he's just going to try and curve out here with the Lothar, contest the board the honest way with minions, lock out spells, hope that there isn't too much of a proactive uh, opportunity for Life Coach here. But he does have the Azure Drake, but he might be wanting to hold back that Drake, ideally to combo with all the removal that he has in his hand. But looks like any other play he makes this turn that doesn't involve playing the Azure Drake is way too passive at this point. Yeah, it's a shame because the Drake Swipe would have been would have lined up so well against a 5-5 and a 2-2. It just so happens that that 5-5 is a low theb, unfortunately. Indeed. So, yeah, I don't think he's happy about just exposing this Azure Drake to the board, but like I said, any other play he makes is just way too passive. Just passes the tempo back over to his opponent, and that, I think, is the first time we've seen Rag drawn by this Druid. I don't want to say that for sure. I think we might have seen it on day one. I feel like I would have remembered, but okay. For no one. I seem to, I, I seem to remember seeing that from okay. Life Coach. Alright, take Maybe, one. to be fair, I've seen so many Druid tournament games lately. Yeah. It may be one that I haven't cast that I'm just remembering, frankly, but yeah. Yeah. I, that Ragnaros is, that, that's a card. It is, that indeed, is. yeah. That is a card. Going for the value trade here, taking out the spell power, playing around the threat of um, potential cards like Hellfire and Demon Wrath that can have more of an impact on the board if the spell damage is up. And also just taking the most honest trade on the board, so this 5-3 is still competitive. Uh, you have a good honest trade. Yeah, good honest trade. Even if the 5-5, the five, five, if Poi tries to play the same game back here and trades the 5-5 five, five into the 4-4, four, four, 
um, to try and get a value trade of his own, then uh, the swipe that Life Coach was unable to play on the previous turn suddenly becomes really good. So, Yeah. Uh, what about the 2 3 into the Azure Drake and Hellfire here? Uh, yeah, that's the first play that I was looking at there, just as I was talking. It definitely has so potential. Uh, doesn't really get to develop too much alongside it, but he does get to tap and he does keep a minion, uh, keep himself a minion ahead of the board, which I like. Uh, so the life tap does come out here. We'll see if that's the play it's going for. It looks like it is. I mean, we discussed this in the last match. We know Life Coach loves a good life tap. Um, that's Hoy. Sorry, yes. Oh, <laughs> I, I'm so used to it not changing now because most of us don't do it. So yeah. it's on the bottom. Life Coach is on the bottom. I'm so confused. Well, Life Coach does like, love life tapping, but so does Hoy, clearly. Indeed. Something. Something is getting big game hunted in this game very, very shortly. But thankfully, Life Coach has a, a couple of options here to be able to, to beat the big game hunter. Because after after the big game hunter is used on one one huge minion here, he has another one to follow it up. So it's going to decide to uh, get the Doctor Boom big game hunted if he does have it, and it also has the added bonus of being able to play the Wrath alongside it to get rid of this five two. I think the Wrath is a major consideration there, being able to clear the board. Because even if you do get big game hunted at this point. It's it, it diminishes what your opponent can develop. Yeah, furthermore, if just the Dr. Boom here is dealt with and the two Boom Bots remain on board, that's actually still lethal with combo. So. Cool. Mm. Um, so yeah, because I, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case because my temptation would be to play the Twilight Drake here alongside the Big Game Hunter. And the only option you have for clearing is demon wrath so you would demon wrath first and then bgh all right and then the boom bots can just hit you in the face anyway so if they deal six damage you're still dead to combo in yeah. fact if they six, if six they damage do, is only one yeah if they do five damage you're still dead because of the discount on the combo yeah, like the hero power get in as well so so if they do the average or above yeah but we have already seen zelay get burned once by needing just uh, you know not even an average outcome from his uh shredders and boom bots but Looks like Hoy here is going to decide that he can't beat the combo, therefore it doesn't exist, but unfortunately for him, his denial of its existence is not well founded. And as long as I've counted this right and Life Coach manages to count it correctly, this is going to be the series and Life Coach is going to be our second finalist. Yeah, Hoy throws out the well played, and that is going to be it. Life Coach with a 3 0 victory. A very impressive day for Life Coach. 3 1 over Firebat. Over Hoy. And as you say, he's going to our final to take on Ryzen, the last hope for Europe to withstand this any onslaught from Ryzen. Uh, and you know, we talked about first time matchups. I'm pretty sure this is one that's never happened in a tournament before. Mm. And it'll be interesting to see if the uh, the style of Ryzen, which obviously has the uh, I believe it's the the Patron Warrior, right, from Ryzen. I'm not sure if we've seen his warrior be played yet in the whole tournament. He's either He's swept games, and he's also had his warrior banned, so I'm not sure if we've yeah. actually seen it played. We, we saw him have the Oil Rogue, the Druid, and the Secret Paladin. Yeah. So obviously a very mid-range focused and aggressive focused lineup yeah. against the, the heavier control style of Life Coach. Uh, you know, it, you'd think that almost Ryzen might be favored in how the lineups go against each other? Um, I mean, let's have a look at it. Life Coach does have the Paladin, the Secret Paladin and the Druid. He does, so, yeah. So, not necessarily, but if uh, if Ryzen bans one of those two, he's then got the 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 Reno Lock and the Control, so, the Dragon Warrior. Yeah, the, the difference in the lineups in terms of classes is we have Rogue and War, Rogue for Ryzen and Warlock for Life Coach. Other than that, the classes match up um, identically. Except Dragon it's Warrior versus Patron Warrior. Right, but the Warriors are not actually similar archetypes because of that Dragon Warrior from Life Coach. So, yeah. Yeah, conventional wisdom would say that mid range beats control. So you think Ryzen might have a, might have a good chance here? Uh, I mean, the one thing I will say is that the one card we don't normally see in that Dragon Warrior list is Brawl, which of course is the key card, and it's the reason why the control style warriors are so heavily favored over the patron warriors. So against a, a more honest minion focused control deck from from the, the Dragon Warrior, the patrons will have a much better chance. Um, and Ryzen definitely does have a very heavily mid-ranged um, focus style, but then so did Hoy, who we've just seen get absolutely demolished by Life Coach. So, so demolished with the Druid, which is another mid-range deck. So yeah. I, I'm, if I'm Ryzen, I think the Druid is probably the target for the ban. 
Uh, we will find out when we get there, obviously. We're going to take a break before we get to the final, but I'd like to see Ryzen ban the Druid because the Rogue lines up against the Paladin and the, the Patron Warrior lines up against the Paladin as well. Yeah. And then you'd think the mid-range decks line up well against the Control. I would entirely agree with that analysis, Callum. Let's do it. Let's ban that Druid and let's win this tournament for complexity. All right, well, let's find out what these guys are going to do. We're going to go to a quick break in the Wombo OG tournament. Of course, remember, this tournament is brought to you by Wombo.gg, where you can play money matches against your friends and pros in all manner of esports game, and by Shoe, ScreenShoe.com. Check them out in the break. And we have just two matches left for you. That is our final. We're going to see that just a little bit later. But coming up next, I believe it's going to be the final of the side event. Green Sheet versus Death War for the first prize, for the, for the biggest share of the $1,000 prize pool. Because there are, of course, so many money matches going on at Womble all the time. We've got <laughs> two tournaments running simultaneously here. Lots of chances for people to, to take home money thanks to Womble.gg. We'll see you in just a few minutes. Thank you very much for watching so far. Stick with us.